Hi guys, how's it going? It's me, Joshua Halter, the owner and founder of The Bio Dude. Today, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of behind the scenes of my quarantine room. Do you guys know all my animals for sale go through a quarantine period before they even come out to my showroom or before they're made available to you? And I wanted to show you guys some of the steps that we do to make sure the animals we're providing to you are healthy, clean, even though they're all captive bred, unless we state otherwise, as well as what we do before I bring any animals out into my showroom. So what I'm showing you goes against everything we talk about when it comes to husbandry and making them feel natural and at home. But when we're deworming them and uh, or rehabilitating them, there are some steps you need to take to make sure that nasties don't get into your established colonies and to make sure if you're reselling them, that they're in tip top shape. So first, let me show you my bearded dragons over here. So all of our lizards go through about a 14 day quarantine period. The second day after they arrive, they are wormed, um, as well as we get weights so on each individual one. We make sure that they're eating. We make sure that they're shedding appropriately, making sure they're not missing any digits or anything like that. So in here, we have some baby bearded dragons. We got these guys in exactly two weeks ago. So they're actually going to be cleared to go out into the floor on uh, Monday, likely. So pretty straightforward. We have, we have a heat dome here that is hooked up to a main thermostat. And then we have UVB here. We are using paper towel substrate uh, or a paper, paper towel cover with a plastic hide and a very rudimentary water dish and then a single piece of wood. Now, I know this isn't what we preach, but we do this, A, to make sure that we're having clean fecals. Number two, we can make sure that if they are shedding, uh, that we can look at the shedding and make sure there's no stuck shed around their toes. We can add moss onto the inside of the cave if necessary. Number two, we're making sure that when we clean the enclosure, we can put water in here, give them a, a nice warm soak if necessary. And of course, to make sure that they're all eating okay. After we are done pulling these critters out of quarantine, we will completely disinfect this bin. And of course, during the routine of cleaning them every other day uh, with replacing the paper towel, giving them fresh water every day, and of course, disinfecting their wood and disinfecting any types of hiding caves that they have. Uh, we also use this room for rehabilitation of animals that aren't doing so great. When it comes to our snakes, this is really gonna make some of you go, cringe we have a, a a rack here this was built by vivarium electronics i got this from reptile basics so on average our snakes are in quarantine for about two weeks um, if they are in shed they have to have a complete shed number two we need to make sure that there's no skin over the eyes for retained eye caps number three we must have two one to two depending on our age successful eating attempts under our belt so we have a heat tape in here hooked up to a thermostat and then this is how we keep our quarantine snakes again guys this isn't this isn't a standard of care that i preach for long-term keeping but for making sure your animals are healthy before introducing them around your collection highly recommend it so this is a Mexican black king snake. Um, so as you can see here, when it comes to snakes, the paper towels, A, help us to make sure that we don't have mites. If they have mites, we'll be able to see them on the paper towel pretty quickly. Number two, we are able to ascertain if they, uh, if they end up regurgitating or having any other types of issues allows us to be able to also look at their bowel movements to make sure that you know they're having normal bowel movements. When we notice these guys are in shed, in shed time, we will put a clump of sphagnum moss in here. And again, the goal is that they're only in here for two weeks maximum, because we know if we have an immunosuppressed animal, they can't be on bioactive usually, because that can lead to other things. As far as lizards are concerned, we have some set exoterras up here that are all Empty. So these are for my emerald tree skinks. So when we have new babies come out, usually in large groups, it'll be uh, from tank showroom, tank showroom. Those babies will go in here. So we'll 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 wet it down, put a new uh, put in uh, uh, fresh lighting on the top, and this is for the groups in the showroom. And these are all standby tanks for anything that we may have come in. Um, somebody put a chameleon in a dumpster and we had a chameleon in there um, for like a week before we moved her into a large, larger enclosure. 
As far as amphibians go, we typically keep, keep amphibians in like a small tub or their own specialized container with paper towels and a water dish for two weeks. And we also uh, test them for chytrid. So before any frog goes out for sale, the group is tested full, making sure they don't have it using the swab. These are some things that in any quarantine room for any keeper that I always have on hand for new arrivals, uh, for, uh, for anything. I have a large mortar and pestle that I use for grinding down the, some of the de dewormer medication that I will either mix into the critical care um, if they are, um, depending on what they are, or I will dust their prey items with it. And that works really well. And we'll do that three weeks apart. I recommend you reach out to your local veterinarian and establish a client relationship to get that uh, medicine. Uh, the, this is our disinfectant that we use. This is the F10. This is the best stuff that you can use to make sure you're not spreading anything. Um, so we use this um, and, and or bleach on every tub at every cleaning, um, as well as disinfecting the area whenever we have a new batch of arrivals coming in for the store. And then of course, uh, we also have a lot of our cleaning supplies and different medications in here. We have gloves when necessary. Everything's properly labeled a sharps container. So when we have to give antibiotic injections um, and then I usually uh, we, we would have a microscope in here, but we don't have the space. So we do all of our fecals at home. As you guys know, my wife is a veterinarian. I just wanted to show you guys some of the steps that I recommend that it doesn't have to be this extensive, but there should be some type of policy in your home in place if you have a larger collection to make sure that new arrivals potentially don't bring anything unwanted such as fungus or mites or any other type of you know virulent disease that can spread rampant i really hope you guys enjoyed this video again these critters aren't in, in containers like this for a long time but we do this to make sure that they have the best chance of survival when they go in their bioactive habitat into their permanent homes Guys, my name's Josh Halter. I'm the owner and founder of The Bio Dude. You can come visit my website. You can come here to my point of sale. You won't be able to get into this room, but a lot of good stuff happening here. Feel free to follow me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all that good stuff. I appreciate everybody's support. The Dude Abides.